kind of funny. Check this out. Come in here. The very first video on my YouTube channel was diagnosing an electrical short on that evaporator coil. And the irony is that this will be my last video on my YouTube channel. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, we've got to complete that half their bar, the beer is pouring warm. So this is their glycol unit. This circulates cold glycol from a reservoir in here, cooled by the compressor and a heat exchanger. And then these pumps push that glycol throughout the beer tap. So they're saying half of it's not working. This pump is running. This pump is not, there it goes, it's locked up. So it looks like we might have a bad pump. So that turned off that one, that turned off the other one, and that turned off that. We're gonna open this up and see if there's something going on with this pump. Pulled off a little band right here, and then the pump actually separates from the motor. The pump is spinning, but it's tight. Very, very tight, very, very hot. The motor spins. Let's go ahead and Yeah. This guy has got something going on inside of it. And the shaft has play. If you grab the shaft and move it up and down, it has play. So it's got bad bearings in the motor. Now we changed the pump right here and the motor as a set. And I have one, so we're gonna get these swapped out. All right, slowly getting the motor put in. A couple things, these MX connectors. Sometimes the, the retaining nut needs to go on this side because this one has a spot for it to twist in, but if you don't put the retaining nut there, which that one was already there, it'll push too far in and it'll pinch the wires or hit the wires. The next thing, this is a resilient mount motor, meaning it has rubber bushings right here and it's not grounded that way. So you have to use these ground wires. Now this is the wire that came on this motor. It was damaged, you can see it was pinched. So I had to take the ground wire off the other motor. Gotta pay attention to that stuff, especially on these cradle mounts or resilient mount motors. All right, this is where this gets hard. Putting the motor in, it's kind of a challenge, whatever. Got that, it runs, it works. We're good, okay? But getting the pump on, that's the tricky part because these lines are full of glycol with the least amount of loss. Sometimes they can create a siphon and just drain the whole dang system. So um, I usually have a couple pans and uh, We'll work on that. We got the new pump right there. So I got to undo these fittings, undo these threaded fittings, undo these fittings. So you put it all back together. Lots of Teflon and everything. Sometimes you got to get a little creative. I just went and got a bolt, shoved it in there. It's drip, drip, and I'll get it swapped out real quick. All right, I turned it back on. I like to give it a few minutes of runtime without insulating to make sure that we don't have any leaks. Looking good so far, nothing. It's been running for about five minutes. Both pumps and motors. We still need to get a current reading on this one to make sure we're not over amping and that's it. Uh, the pump is running at 5.4 amps. It's allowed to run 6.1. The other one's running fine too. So we're just gonna wait. I'm gonna clean up my tools and we're gonna watch this guy come down to temperature. Hopefully everything else is good with it. It's kind of funny, check this out. Come in here. The very first video on my YouTube channel was diagnosing an electrical short on that evaporator coil. And the irony that this will be my last video on my YouTube channel. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't say stuff like that, but yeah. Uh, always wanna make sure the beer walking is temping proper. It's 34 degrees in here, nice and cold. Um, this can be the source of glycol problems too. Uh, warm beer, I should say, because the beer has to be cold in here. The glycol unit then keeps the beer cold from this walk into the taps, so. I really shouldn't joke like that, but it is kind of funny. This was the very first video on my YouTube channel was literally diagnosing an electrical short. If you still go back to the very first video, it's, it's working on that beer walking. And, uh, you know, that's what started the whole YouTube channel is me making that video to show my employees, you know, this is how we do things. If you guys haven't heard the story, I got myself into a position where we lost, it was like four employees at the same time as four or five. I can't remember, but it was a lot. Right. I think we were down to two people, myself and someone else. Um, and, uh, you know, there was fault on all sides, but I'm going to take a majority of the blame because I missed signs from my employees. I wasn't paying attention. We got complacent. Life happened. And, you know, within a month's time, we had four people quit. 
And, uh, you know, one person moved on to bigger, better things. One person decided to go work for a different company. One person left the industry. So it wasn't like everybody just left. I mean, for all varying reasons, but there certainly was a surprise for us when we found out. And so we had to hire new people with experience, right? But they weren't experienced in the way that I do things. So that's what started the YouTube channel. And if you go back and watch that very first video, it's kind of funny because I remember I still get comments about that video and people are like, why are you talking to me? Why are you telling me what to do? Because it's not meant for the general public. This is meant for my employees. And that was the whole basis of starting this YouTube channel, right? So anyways, here we are, long story short, that was November of 2017 when I started the channel. Um, and uh, what, we're November of 2023 now. Wow, full circle, right? My phone was just going off. That's what happens when I don't turn my ringer off, right? You guys get to hear the ringer going crazy. So, um, you know, I, I'm all about the big picture. I'm all about trying to eliminate future problems. For instance, on this glycol unit, as I repaired this glycol unit, um, you know, this uh, pump that I changed, pump and motor, when I say pump, it's kind of universal. I'm talking about a pump and a motor. But this pump, right, and motor, you can tell that the motor had been replaced before, but the pump had not. That was an original pump. It had the banner name on it. That's the manufacturer of the equipment. Um, it was it was much older than the motor. It's always best. Usually what kills the motors is the pump starting to gum up, okay? When the pumps start to gum up, uh, it makes the motors work harder, damages the bearings, causes the motors to go out, okay? I know there's gonna be a bunch of people out there, why don't I change the bearings? It's not practical to change bearings in a motor. If it's five horsepower or under, most of the time it's not practical to do a bearing replacement, especially on these kind of customers that don't do routine maintenance and aren't maintaining their equipment because not only does it have bad bearings, but it's been overheating for a very long time. So the internals of the motor are gonna be damaged. If you ever pull apart a motor, look at it and you'll see everything has just heat stress cracks in it and all kinds of stuff, right? So anyways. It's always best when you're working on these glyco units to change the pump and the motor as a set. And that's why oftentimes I just call it a pump because it's just a set in my eyes, okay? We don't ever just change one or the other. We change them both as a set. So we got it back up and running. We changed the pump and motor. I watched the unit come down to temperature. I made sure that the refrigerant charge looked good. I did not put service gauges on this. This unit has a very small refrigerant charge, but it does happen to have a sight glass on it. So judging by how fast I used a lot of vital signs, I'm not just looking at a sight glass. I'm watching the box. I turn it back on. You know, if I don't see a significant temperature drop, I'm talking 20, 30 degrees within 20 minutes. I start to investigate further. In this case, I saw a significant temperature drop. The sight glass was clear. And then eventually we watched the box come down to temperature or the, the glycol unit come down to temperature. Now what I did in this situation is oftentimes what'll happen is in between the beer walking, because you have the beer walking where you store the kegs, right? And then you have um, tap lines run into the kegs and then those tap lines either go up into the attic or down underground, depending on whatever situation. I can't remember how this one runs. But the glycol unit wraps around those tap lines as it goes to the bar, whether it be underground or up into the attic, and it keeps them cold from point A to point B. The beer walk can be in point A, beer at 34 degrees, 35 degrees, and then you want it to be below 40 as it's pouring out the tap. So the glycol unit supplements that, helps to maintain temperatures. In this situation, this unit had been down for two days. So their beer in those lines was just really, really warm. So the customer ended up having to run about three to four pitchers of every beer that was on that tap head to clear out the warm beer. Otherwise, they would have had to wait hours and hours and hours for it to come down to temperature. So they ran all that beer through, just dumped it down the drain. Once we got 40 degree beer in the system from the beer walk in, then yeah, it was just maintaining no problem. So everything's good. I really appreciate you uh, making it to the end of the video. It's really awesome to have the support from you guys. Do me a favor, leave me some feedback, let me know what you think. Again, I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available on there, sweaters, beanies, stickers, hats. It's just a great way to support the channel. And I try not to step on the merch too much as far as the price goes, okay? Typically on the hats and actually the sweaters, I don't make any money because we're trying to clear those out because they're just not selling as fast. So, But on the hats and the beanies, um, actually, I don't know if I do it on the beanies. I know on the hats, I have a $5 profit in them. 
that's it. I just take the price of the all my you know my prices. I add five bucks to it, and that's all. I just I make five bucks off of every hat. And then the same thing with the shirts. Same thing. The sweaters I used to have like a five dollar profit, but I cut that out just to try to get them as to, to basically I'm getting rid of the sweaters for cost at this point. Um, which they're nice sweaters, but you know for whatever reason people just don't want to buy them. It's all good. I don't care. Um, you know, I just want to clear them out eventually. <laughs> My wife was like, why don't you just go give them to a homeless shelter? And I'm like, yeah, but then you'd have a bunch of homeless people running around wearing HVACR video sweaters. That'd be kind of silly, like walking through the streets and you're like, Hey, that guy's got my sweater. <laughs> but, um, anyways, that's a whole nother thing. So, uh, yeah, HVACRvideos.com. If you want to help me out, purchase some merch, a couple other ways to support the channel. The easiest way is simply watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. Then if you're interested, you can support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. Uh, those are all ways. There's links in the show notes for that. Uh, last but not least, if you go to truetechtools.com, if you see me using any cool tools that you see in my videos, a good majority of the time I purchase them from truetechtools.com. I've negotiated an affiliate code with truetechtools.com. If you use my offer code, big picture, one word, uh, you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website, and then I get a small commission from that. So it doesn't cost you anything extra, kind of helps the channel a little bit too. So check it out at truetechtools.com. Again, I really appreciate you. Thank you so very much, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.